Good morning church family, Norman Foss speaking. Just a short word of thanks before we begin. Elise and I would like to thank you for all your prayers to bring me home safely and for those of you who assisted so willingly with donations to enable me to survive my five unplanned for weeks in Bali and pay for a repatriation flight that brought me home. I returned to South Africa on the 8th of May and I went into quarantine in Santon. After proving negative for COVID-19, I was allowed to return home on the 16th of May, after nine weeks away from home. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you can't believe how happy and grateful I am to be home with my wife, Elise. But now, it's my privilege to bring you this morning's devotion from the book of James, and let's pray. Father God, as we bow before you this morning, I just pray, Lord, that you'd look into our hearts and what you'd find there would please you, a love for you, a submitted will, a love, Lord, that means that we want to do what pleases you, to serve you. And so, Lord, even as we come before your word here this morning, I just pray that we would drink in what you have to say to us, that we would take note of every word and then apply it to our lives when the devotion is finished. So thank you in advance, Father God, for what your Spirit will say to our hearts this morning. Amen. Our devotion this morning is taken from James chapter 4, verses 1 through to 6. By way of a title, I've called it, Whose Friend Are You? In a previous devotion that we did a few days ago, from chapter 3, verse 16, James says, Where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. And he continues this theme in today's passage in chapter 4. So let's read from today's passage, James chapter 4, verses 1 through to 6. And I'll be reading from the NIV. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and you covet but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred with, towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. What do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble just so far this morning now there are three things that we can highlight from this passage of scripture today first of all i want you to see james's question and that is through verses one through to three james starts off this chapter with a question what causes fights and quarrels and disorder among you now we need to recognize that we all have human emotions. We all have personal desires. But envy, jealousy, selfishness, hatred and pride do not belong in the nature of a true believer. James recognizes that there are two natures warring with inside of us. And of course we know that the opposite of war is peace. There can be no peace inside of us while we are at war, quarreling or fighting with one another. And quarreling, we know, can escalate into violence, even among Christians. Things get heated and we can lose our tempers. Quarrels happen mainly because of pride. When someone won't accept your ideas, or they did something that you didn't like, or maybe they did not follow your instructions. It happens when things are not to your liking, or when you feel offended by what someone said. Remember a few days ago, the devotion was about the tongue and words can hurt and offend. Now in verse 2, the central word there that we find is covet, is to covet. And covetousness is a plain and simple sin. We want, we desire, often, no matter what the cost. 
If we don't get what we want, we get upset, we quarrel, we fight. We lose perspective and sometimes we even lose our temper. Now love and peace and self-control, which are fruit of the Spirit, are forgotten and sometimes violence is not far behind. The more you cannot have, the more quarrelsome you become. Like a child who can't get his way, who can't get what they want. You often don't get what you want because you leave God out of the equation. We forget biblical principles, like Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through to 7, which says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in all things, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and the God of peace will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. We sometimes try to do things in our own strength and we forget about our Heavenly Father's promises. So, when we do make our requests known to God, do we ever examine our motives? Who benefits from the requests that we make? You, your neighbour, your community? What about the Kingdom of God? The Bible is very clear. Selfish requests will hinder a positive response from our Father God. So examine your prayers. Wrong motives and wrong attitudes will hinder God granting your requests. If your requests are all about you and your wants and your desires, don't be surprised when God does not grant them. And when God does grant a request of yours, who gets the honour and glory? Do you now brag about what you've achieved or what you've accomplished? Or do you give the honour to the giver, our Father God? The second point that I'd like to highlight here today that we find in verses 4 and 5, and that is James's anger. In verse 4 we see James is, James in no uncertain terms, is calling people to account. He's reminding them that they had once made a decision to follow Christ. They should therefore have broken all ties with the world and made Christ the main focus in their daily lives. But they are acting in an unfaithful way by living in worldly fashion. You cannot dabble in the world with all its attractions and think God will allow it and give you his blessings. He will not be pleased when you chase after worldly pleasures, worldly possessions, and position and even power. If you are friends with the world, you are an enemy of God. God does not allow double-mindedness. In Revelation chapter 3 verses 15 and 16 we read these words. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold or hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you were lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And that's a frightening prospect. In verse 5 we get further clarity is given when James makes it crystal clear that God's Spirit, who lives inside of every believer, is intensely jealous and does not allow other idols to compete for his attention. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24 we read, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. God will not share his glory with another. Our love, our gratitude and our faithfulness belong to the one and only true living God. So you see the world offers fame and fortune, shiny possessions and mind-altering pleasures. But we are alerted to the dangers of these temporary things in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. The opposite of that is God's offer is eternity in the presence of a loving, righteous and a just God. Thirdly, we note James's remedy and we see that in verse 6. So the passage this morning concludes with James's remedy or reminder that our God is a gracious, forgiving God. Time and again, as we return to him and submit ourselves fully to his will and to his word, he forgives and he restores us back to our place of usefulness within the body of Christ. Forget your pride and your selfish desires and rather inquire as to what he requires of you and surrender your will and humble yourselves before a gracious God, a God who loves you, who gave his son to die for the forgiveness of our sins, so that we can have a personal, intimate relationship with him. There's no room for a compromise with this world. It must be all about his glory. So we must individually take note of this passage. You cannot stand with one foot in heaven and one foot in the world. It doesn't work that way. It's either one or the other. So this morning the question is, whose friend are you? 
a friend of the world's with all its attractions or are you a friend of God's? It's your choice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your reminder here, which is so clear, that sometimes our desires and our wants get the better of us. And Lord, it can, it can lead us into quarrels and, and, and fights among ourselves. We get so selfish with what we want that we forget, Lord, it should truly be all about you. There's no place for the world in our lives. It should be all about you, the one and true and only living God. Thank you, Father God, for your Son. Thank you for the salvation that you made available to us, so full and so free. But Lord, we need to remember that we need to surrender to your will. We need to humble ourselves before you. We need to submit to you. Because Father God, it truly is all about you. You love us. You've provided for us your son for which we thank you. And Lord, we want to be your friend. So won't you this morning just touch our hearts and just awaken us to this truth. Because Lord, it, it might be our choice, but you have given your son, you've given your all for us. And so thank you for your word this morning. I pray, Father God, that we will take it and apply it to our lives. And the choice may be a friend of God's and not of the world's. In Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. <laughs>